For more than half a century, one organization for young people has dedicated itself to America's most important values. It was found in April of 1959 by some very dedicated Marines who, once they left the Marine Corps, they felt that the values that had been instilled in them were worth passing on to the youth in Waterbury. So they started this program for boys. It started as a small gathering in Waterbury, Connecticut, with a handful of men of the Brass City Detachment of the Marine Corps League. Well, I was with the original group back in 1959 when we had a meeting up in our Cochran's attic, decided to come up with a program for our sons and, and a few of the younger boys in the area, you know. We're having our meetings and so on, and uh, Art, he said, uh, we ought to start a bunch of kids. It just came about this. Somebody thought up the idea, like, let's get the young kids together. Let's train them. This is the story of the Young Marines of the Marine Corps League. We were trying to get a Boy Scout thing going, and they told us we had to go to school and learn all about the Boy Scouts. Well, we said that's a little bit too much for us because we all work and all that. So we got together and said, well, look, what we really wanted was 13 kids to, to march in a parade, Memorial Day Parade. So we said, well, we get our own kids, we'll get them uniforms. We bought them little uniforms, bought them caps. We started this year thing up. I said, okay, let me get a few kids out here. Let me start drilling them. So uh, the kids got to like it. Before you know it, a whole big gang of them coming down, all falling in, they want to get it. Okay. And they had friends, and their friends had friends. They just started showing up. That first group of young Marines could hardly stand still. My youngest brother had joined first, and within one year, all four of us were involved in the young Marine program. That's how it developed, and that's how it started to grow. If they were willing to learn, we were willing to teach them. I had the staff of six good men. That were, it wasn't just me alone. It was, I, had, I had a good staff. They were all dedicated Marines. We started to send up the kids. We had a D.I. down there, but his name is Whitey Doolin. He was perfect for the job he had to break in the kids who were just coming in. He had a real D.I.'s face, and he treated like a real D.I. would, but he treated him gently. Teach them what they should do and how to do it. They taught us discipline. They taught us to say, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, and to be polite, which I believe uh, helped us in our home life. They actually earned their rank, uh, just like regular Marines do, and they would step up to those positions and they would be taking charge of the unit. One thing we never stressed is that we never said, you're gonna be Marines. We laid our rules down to the kids how they had to be. They had to show us the report cards. They had to get reports from their parents, how they behaved and so on and so forth. These kids were real wild. Way of life, how they obeyed their mother and father. Good things, everything to keep them go high and keep them going straight. It's all life skills that you're being taught. Before you know it, we're getting complimented by the teachers at the school how the kids have changed, you know. They, they were polite. They all did good in school. We say, any bad remarks, you guys are gonna do push-ups here and everything, maybe even throw you out. They didn't want to hear that. The original group of 16 and the subsequent response to the whole plan was so overwhelming that the entire concept of the program was expanded. Hey! Membership quickly went from 16 members to over 300. It got to be so good. We ended up with about 300 kids. We started in the VFW, it was a small hall, and we got so many kids, we had to move out to the Army Reserve. They let, let us use their place on Friday nights. But it wasn't just there. We also had a unit over at the Naval Reserve on Tompkins Street on the other side of town. There was another unit at Frisbee School in Wolkett. So you had three units. Before you knew it spread all over, we got a big group of guys here now. And as we did at Waterbury, then it started going to Ansonia and, and, you know, Seymour and all the other units around the state started to get involved in it, and that's when it got involved in, in the whole state of Connecticut. 
I can tell you what it feels like to be named the number one youth group in the state of Connecticut when we marched in the Loyalty Day Parade in Putnam, Connecticut. Before you know it, we got guys marching in parades. Did drill competitions. They were doing so good up against regular Army, Air Force, drill teams. These kids were beating them all. We took number one and the Raiders took number three. And out of all the units that were in the parade, here you got two young Marine units that stood out. And we drilled these kids in the middle of the street. People go wild. It was like thunder. The boots hitting the pavement. You can hear them from a half mile away. You can hear the cadence. It was awe-inspiring as a young kid just to be a part of that. And that was it. Our busy time was at the parades and marching, drilling. At one time, people were very patriotic. But we don't see it today, unfortunately. That was instilled in us, and it was all positive. They gained a little patriotism, and more importantly, they gained a little leadership. The young Marines never stopped marching, but as the organization grew, so did their range of activities. Some of the activities that we had, camping overnight, going on hikes. They did a play called Hobo Gentlemen. Having the uh, young Marine baseball team. They became a member of the Little Fellows League, which was before the Little League. We had a real Little League stadium here and we got in it with all the other veterans clubs and uh, civic clubs. That was fun. The parents were there every week. They had a cheering section. It really formed a bond and camaraderie amongst a lot of us. We had a banquet at the end of the year, and they gave the four uh, coaches a cup and a cigarette lighter. The young Marines took the championship. We had to buy the kids at banana splits. <laughs> For every game they won, we used to buy them popsicles. If they lost, they had to buy us. Can you imagine four guys eating 15 ice creams? The team was so successful that they won an impressive 14 baseball games that first year. By October of 1965, the program was officially chartered by the Marine Corps League and became a national youth program. The program continued to grow and finally it needed to have additional recognition. And what happened to some of those very same founders, as loyal and as dedicated as they were to the Marine program here in Waterbury, actually raised money and went down to Kansas City in 1965 at the annual convention of the Marine Corps League, at which time the Marine Corps League then adopted the Young Marine program as its subsidiary youth organization, and it was then that the program was chartered and officially became known as the Young Marines of the Marine Corps League. When they took it to the national level, the National Marine Corps League loved the idea, and that's where it was picked up and things really started to grow from there. It started to go around the country then, you know. I watched this program really take off. The Young Marines achieved yet another milestone and extended its membership to females. November 18, 1973, the first female Young Marines were invited into Waterbury Unit and they wore red berets to separate them from the other Young Marines. Our population right now is about 33% female, and I think that bodes well for the program on the whole. I think it's the best thing in the world for uh, appreciating your family, God, the country. I think that is wonderful. As people across America embraced the ideals of the young Marines, the group took its place on the national stage. In 1977, the organization created a board of directors, and in 1978, a set of bylaws. The Young Marines received its 501c3 status in 1980. In 1993, the United States Marine Corps chose the Young Marines as its focal point for its youth drug demand reduction effort. And in 2001, the Secretary of Defense awarded the first Fulcrum Shield Award for excellence in youth anti-drug education. We have won that award a total of three times now, and I fully expect that we're gonna have a run on that award for the coming years. The new century brought a new mascot and a new national spokesman, movie personality and Marine veteran, R. Lee Irby. The Young Marines is a program that builds discipline, leadership, and teamwork. Today, the Young Marines rely on the leadership of many extraordinary men and women. After former Marine Jim Parker retired as national director in 1999, after nine years of service, 
the young Marines named their first national executive director, Lieutenant Colonel Mike Kessler. I, I don't know if you can put into words the amount of emotion that Mike Kessler puts into it. I mean, he is just absolutely on top of everything. He wants his people to shine, and they do. Celebrating its 50th anniversary in 2009, young Marines from across the country traveled to Waterbury, Connecticut to honor the rich history that the original founders had envisioned. This is the 50th anniversary, and it's here in our city, Waterbury, Connecticut. Our treasure are the youth. All you young Marines that came in from all over the country. Do you know, with our youth being like they are, we don't have to worry about the future. Today, we walk down East Main Street, the same route that I marched many times as a young Marine. Yes, I am proud to have been a young Marine and a product of this program. Today, for all of the past, present, and future young Marines, I say thank you to our founding fathers for a job well done. May the insight and vision of our founding fathers continue to grow with this latest generation of young Marines. You're gonna unveil two signs dedicating our street over here as Young Marine Way here in Waterbury, Connecticut. They're going to unveil those signs shortly. That's the Paul McGarrett's effort. Wow, this is awesome. What a magnificent picture. What a magnificent day. The values of leadership, teamwork, and discipline. And I would have to stand up here and submit to you today that there is not another youth organization in the United States of America that does more to honor those core values or does more to ensure that they understand the value of maintaining a healthy, drug-free lifestyle or a youth organization that does more to honor the contributions of America's veterans. It's about training young people for life. And I want the young Marines here to carry on this proud tradition that was started 50 years ago. We are going to resurrect the Brass City Memorial Detachment of the Young Marines. This is going to happen. Exciting to see these kids marching in the parade and doing what I used to do. A lot of the uh, population came up to me afterwards and said, wow, that is Americana right there. What a great organization, and thank you guys for what you do. Being here for the 50th, it, it just hits you. It's cool to kind of be back here, just where it started. Walking in the parade today was just an awesome feeling. To march on the same streets as the very first Young Marines did is something really special. So I think that living timeline, is, it looks incredible. It's a great honor, and we get to exchange experiences. It's overwhelming. I'm very excited to be where the Young Marines were created and meeting the forefathers of the Young Marines. You know, we've evolved 50 years older. It's like watching something go from a couple of kids to such a national scale program and be so much more impactful. It's, it's, it's awesome. And it's great. I'm just so excited to see where we can go in the future. What a great day. It was amazing. The kids were wonderful. They sat around me, listened to stories from the old days. But there's nothing's changed. The faces have changed, but the core values of the Young Marines hasn't changed. Once you see the Young Marines and what they've accomplished and what they do, uh, you really have to take a step back and say, you know, we really have a great generation coming along. Today, they're involved in everything. It's something that children, they don't have to do. It's something that they want to do. They're looking for structure in their life. 50 years of strengthening the lives of America's youth, and, and that's, that's an awesome accomplishment. Motivated today? Yes, the young Marines continue to strengthen the lives of America's youth, including today's membership of over 14,000 youth members and 3,400 adult volunteers worldwide. The credit for this amazingly successful program goes to a handful of men who had a vision and founded the Young Marines of the Marine Corps League that we know today. I never knew it would come to the proportions that it is. I'm proud of them. I can't believe it's so big as it is now. You know, 
really. I give all the credit to the Young Marine program because it gave me the structure and the discipline in my life that I could do anything that I wanted to do. I never expected this to be this big. I don't think any of us ever did. It's a good program. It's a very good program, but I never visualized it, it, it to be this big. It turned out so good. We're so happy that we started that thing. I never thought it would ever come to this. Never, ever figured it would come to this. I'm shaking. I'm elated. I'm so happy. I'm proud. I'm proud. Semper Fi. Hoorah. Come on, boys. Let's roll. <laughs>